So you want to grow your own food, get your hands dirty, and maybe have some more space around. Maybe you're planning to have kids and don't want them to grow up in the city. Maybe you want to work with animals or drive and play around as much as you can in stuff that run on diesel. Or maybe you just want to step outside naked, do the river dance, and hum the Darth Vader theme song as loud as you can without bothering anyone. Maybe you should just get a farm or a small homestead. Hi, I'm e, and three years ago, I bought a farm here in Norway, a herd of water buffaloes, some ducks, some chickens, a cat, and two herding dogs. I tried to build this farm from scratch, and I post videos about my journey here on the channel. So if this is your first time here, welcome. So you know why you want to live on a farm or a small homestead. Now let's talk about what to do there and we'll divide it into two categories. A, you want to be self-sufficient and grow all of your and your family's own food. And B, you want to be a full-time farmer, making all your money from what you make on the farm. And C is somewhere in between. There's a million ways to live on and run a farm. Let's start with A. You have a small vegetable garden and a couple of ducks to fertilize that garden and to provide you with eggs. And that could be it. But then you throw a couple of turkeys in there, a couple of ducks, maybe some pigs, a calf or two. Then you basically have, depending on the size of your family and the garden, enough eggs, vegetables and meat to feed your whole family. <laughs> Next year, you double everything. You still have food for you and yours, but you sell off the other half to someone else. Then that money can pay for your half and you eat for free. If you then increase again after that, you might get some profit out of it too, while still providing for yourself. Of course, you'll need money for equipment and seeds and housing and the animals and stuff like that. But we'll get to that later in the video. Yes. Funge? And then you start to think about it. Those pigs are really cool. And there's a lot of people in your area that likes bacon, because who doesn't? Hey. Hi. So you cut back on all the other stuff and grow a team of pigs. Or is it a pack of pigs? A pig pack? And then you're a pig farmer. Or maybe you just love the smell of cheese in the morning and start milking some cows or some goats or some sheep or some water buffaloes and suddenly you're in the dairy business. Or B, you want to go straight to specializing and get a big bunch of sheep, goats, cattle, corn, grain, salads, worms, bees, whatever. Whatever you're interested in and think you can sell with a profit and survive. Too <laughs> late. Now, what kind of farm do you get? Well, that depends on your needs and how big your wallet is. If what you want is a small garden and some chickens, you don't need that much space. But if you want to include some animals or, an, or a bigger crop, you'll need some land to go with the house as well. If you don't have a lot of money, but know the upside down of a hammer, you can get some land without any buildings on them and build them yourself. Or maybe you find a place where the buildings are in pretty bad shape and you fix them, there, and you fix them yourself over time. Depending on how much you want it, I have heard about people starting out in living in small trailers, gradually improving the living situation while growing the farm. And though I've spent all my money buying the farm and the animals and caring for those animals, I've just started patching the house together and I'm three years in. 
I've had pants all over the floor collecting rainwater from a leaking roof and some winter mornings with five degrees Celsius in the kitchen before I can get the fireplace going. But this isn't about me. I'll tell you more about my story in future videos. This is about how you can fulfill your dream of getting a farm. I guess if you start with almost no money, you got the place you can afford and build it over time. But if you have the dough, you'll try and get the place that fits your needs right away. Although your needs might change, so I think the properties and the land is more important than the buildings. Buildings you can do something about. What's the soil like and the climate? Are there many frost nights? Is there a water supply? And is there a bakery nearby? Befel. And how do you find a farm in the first place? Well, that probably depends on where you are. Some places it's almost impossible to find anything, at least that's affordable. And some places they couldn't be happier for you to come and join their community and start a farm. Often it has something to do with accessibility. If you live near a major city or in a place with deep roots in farming, it's probably not that easy to find something. But if you are willing to relocate maybe to a more remote location, you could get lucky. If you don't find anything using the common ways to find property, maybe put an ad in the paper and present yourself and your plans to the people who live there. Or you can make a presentation and post it on social media on like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Just make sure to make it public so your friends can share it with their friends and so on. Or do what I did, I knew the area I wanted to live in so I asked local farmers around here. I also drove around uh, looking for abandoned places and tracked down the owner, made the call and I got lucky. In this country, we're 5 million people and a couple of years ago, it was 30,000 unused farm just standing there. And the problem is that people don't want to sell. They don't want to live and work there themselves, but very often the, the farm has been in the family for generations and therefore have emotional value. And they think that maybe someday a relative will live there and farm. Maybe. Another big issue is inheritance. Uh, siblings who can't agree on what to do with the place after their parents passing. Ending up arguing and not speaking to each other while the farm is just standing there, not getting the love and attention it needs. There are so many young people out there wanting to get into that life. So if you currently are sitting on an abandoned farm for whatever reason, give it some thought, talk to your loved ones and sell it to someone who really wants it and can give it the love and care that it needs. Renting is also an option to get started. Uh, if you find a house in the countryside uh, and some unused land nearby, you can ask to rent it to grow your uh, herd or your crop, giving you more time to find the place of your dreams. And if you make everything mobile, you can bring it along with you when you move.
a lot of farmers have jobs on the side or are doing farming next to a full-time job. Whether you have money or need to take up a loan, you want to have a plan. If you roll in, how much can you make doing what you want? Do you need to take up a loan? Should you quit the day job right away or build the farm up slowly? A lot of people have been working from home lately uh, because of you know what. Could you keep doing that and also run a farm? And also you need to take in consideration unexpected expenses. Suddenly one of the animals needs to see a vet, your crop goes to shit or your tractor breaks down. Or you need new tires and they cost 500 bucks. How much cheese do you have to sell to pay them off? And not to talk about expecting the unexpected, at least when you have animals. You could be at a wedding getting a text saying that your pigs have broken out of the fence and are currently tearing your neighbor's lawn and roses apart. You could also do some stupid shit like I just did, changing those tires uh, just to save some time and get hospitalized. Or you could get ready for a Christmas party, just checking in on the water buffaloes before you go and you see that the whole of the inside of the vagina is hanging out and you need to try and push it back in. When stuff like that happens, it's a good thing to know people in your area with experience that you can ask for advice and for help. There's new stuff to learn every day. So a great tip is to get to know people that know something about what you're doing. And remember, things have a tendency to take a little more time than you want. One thing I've learned, there's always next year. And you get to dress like a toddler for work. So should you be a farmer? My last three years have been the toughest, both financially, emotionally, and physically, but there's nothing I'd rather do and no place I'd rather be than right here, right now, doing this. I'm E and I'm a farmer. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.